Let's get some phones here so it doesn't ring and make noise here. How you doing? And um, but one of the things that I wanted to talk with you about, um, I've received a lot of messages uh, from people around the planet uh, who have heard of you and uh, listened to your stuff. You know, you've got a whole bunch of information and stuff on your website, right? And they say, oh, this is so cool. He's saying exactly the same stuff as you are, you know, but it's a boy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like how do you feel about that and how do you see that how do you explain that the people perceive that or and when we have conversations it's like yeah it's totally resonant man yeah it's, that's what i'm saying sometimes we use different words but we actually mean the same stuff yeah it's quite well, usual <laughs> yeah what i find is that uh, and this was the same experience i was having with you uh, i was when i first heard about you some time ago uh, that you were saying the same thing, right? Uh, in, in, in many different ways. Uh, uh, you had your terminologies and words and so forth, but it was good and uh, it was accurate. So I knew that it was coming from a similar source of consciousness and a certain level of vibration and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that's how I felt in, in regards to that. And it was actually, for me, it was actually great because it was great to hear from somebody else because sometimes you feel like you're the only one speaking. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. And you're going, okay, uh, I know it, I feel it, uh, people that resonate with it, but you don't have that feedback from anybody. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know about yourself, but at times, you know, when you hear other resources of information, uh, this is what happens with myself personally, is if I hear somebody else saying something, um, I hear it, and then my own higher self comes in and fills in either the blank or modifies it and saying, no, it's not quite this way. It's this way. Right. And with yourself, it was very little of that, if any at all, actually. And it was, oh, great. I don't, I don't have to have it narrated or you know, changed in any way. It just seems to, to, to be that way. Yeah. So the thing, the beauty of us both speaking uh, similar information it not only adds confirmation to the collective but it also has two different energy forms because male female but also at the same time uh, the the terminologies of how it's used it also uh, creates some more uh, confirmation and balance for everybody and uh, I so I find it I find it that uh, it's great because in a, in a way, when we're, we're discussing certain things or, or you're, you know, a certain topic, for example, and you explain it and then I may explain it or vice versa, um, it's, it actually not only adds more credibility, but at the same time it goes, oh, okay, I got the two twists, the two sides of it. Now it seems like they've got the whole picture of it, right? If they only catch part of it. And then, so um, I find it it's very uh, complimentary, that's for sure. Yeah, it's enriching and also, um, uh, what's that word? More, yeah, la more complete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Some of the texts we exchanged mentioned uh, things such as healing and also the situation that's happening right now because we're in April. Are we April? No, we're May. May, yes. Yeah. And, um, there's something up. I mean, I think today it feels much easier. It feels maybe last night it started easy enough, like in the middle of the night, four or three to one o'clock in the morning. And then this morning it felt much easier, like a, you know, and I don't know if that's a permanent thing, whether it's going to last or not, but it's like irrelevant. But it was like really intense for the past three and a half weeks, four weeks between April and May of this year. Um, and um, I mean, we've talked about it. Uh, there's further insights about that too. It's just so that people get, uh, okay, so I'm not the only person, mm -hmm. right? Some of the symptoms have been physical, like super physical and they're like attention really really 
they're like the physical body is super tense, um, stressed out in a way, and the neck and the shoulders and the head is like, you know. And when I was looking at that, it felt almost like, and also physically, like things are just popping up from different timelines. It's almost like we are kind of buzzing through different timelines and and the physical bodies don't like it right because they don't like change they don't like shifting uh, frequencies or vibrations or dimensions or timelines and it feels like that's where the tension's coming from it's really physical um i can't remember who it was that mentioned something about it being i think it was larry that mentioned um the chemtrails and stuff like that working really hard to uh, maintain a certain frequency or dimension at a physical level, physical body level. And, um, and it's like, that's working, you know, it's like, it's the, the physical body is really out there um, doing that. So, yeah. So yeah. What, what's your insight on that? Well, I have to agree with you. I mean, today is the 13th, Friday the 13th, uh, when we're recording this. Um, I felt the same thing because uh, it has been quite intense for quite a while. And um, overnight, something shifted I, as I sent you a message uh, this morning. Hi there. <laughs> and uh, so it, it felt, I, I felt the shift within myself in a way where there was a lightening up, like a, like yeah. a, a breathing uh, room was provided sort of thing right so kind of catch up on your um, on your breath sort of thing yeah but I must say um, I have to agree with you it has been quite intense for quite a while now for a few weeks and uh, I, I notice it because some of the work I do behind the scenes and so forth that uh, have there's a sense of urgency mm. that has been caring and you're right about the resistance of change uh, on a, a level because the physicality really is not comfortable in the realm that it's in and it wants change. Mm. However, as the change comes through, it's still very foreign to it and it has that little bit of resistance and sometimes it puts firewalls and so forth. So you're going to feel the tension in your body. Some people have said that they have like a band tightening in their head, you know, like somebody's just cranking it up so yeah. that in essence, it feels like uh, there's a pressure uh, uh, with that. But they're also finding, the other thing that I keep hearing from, and I, I've, I've had some of these experiences too, is that there, there seems to be also a, um, a stress level, a higher stress level, like you were mentioning, uh, but also a confusion in a way too, in, in, in a sense where, like I, I don't know where to go anymore because I feel so many different things, almost like I'm being pulled in different ways and uh, I don't know what direction to even take. And it's not because there's all these directions is, is because the, a certain level of uncertainty uh, comes up because of these changes that, mm -hmm. that they're experiencing. So many people are going through that and some of the intensities that I hear from people is like they want to even check out, right? You know, it's like, I know. Oh, I right? Yeah. I've, uh, uh, to be honest with you, I received a couple of emails uh, recently asking me how they can check out easily without miss, uh, failing, <laughs> you know. <laughs> or uh, Kimberly would receive a, uh, received one from a gentleman, and he says, "Can you ask Frank what's the best way to leave?" You know. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And uh, you know, and again, I know that's temporary because we go through that uh, intensity uh, uh, at times because of all that's, uh, that's playing out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we do do right through it. I don't sense personally that this breathing room is permanent. Uh, I didn't sense it either. It was just yeah. like, a, whew, you know, okay, yeah, you take advantage of it because it's not going to last. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So it, it's like we were saying, it's kind of catch your breath, but, you know, there's more waves coming through. Yeah. This year is a big year, and we've talked about it. It's a it's a really big year for people really to um, really transform. Actually, letting go of all the the firewalls, all the stories, the programs, the belief systems, to really undefine themselves of how they've categorized and defined themselves. So, 
there's going to be more of really letting go of what they've represented themselves to the world in a way mm -hmm. so that they can let the new aspects of themselves come through. So this is what I've, I've noticed. And believe it or not, I mean, as much as I've experienced a life where, you know, there's been a lot of challenges and I've noticed that at times I was almost, I felt like I was immune to most of the stuff that was going on yeah. uh, to a certain level, not totally. Uh, when, especially in childhood and whatever else was going on and, and uh, certain events would come up and um, I would be able to walk through it without really being too, you know, damaged by it, if you want to call it that, or scathed by it or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I thought, wow, okay, you know, I don't need to have all these experiences. Okay, I'm learning from it and so forth. But in the last year and a half, I must say, all that stuff that I never had to look at, it seemed like it was just, I walked, it was like a walk in the park, <laughs> all of a sudden came to the surface. And I have not had to look at any of this stuff, and now I'm going, holy, <laughs> this is what people go through, yeah. and now I'm looking at it. And uh, not only that, you know, you get the emotional components coming in, you're having the stories coming in. And, and you know what the fun part is, Anelia, and I'm sure you probably realized this and had, had to experience it. You know, we talk about having a higher consciousness and knowing. Okay. I know a lot of stuff because I have lots of access. But you have a trigger come on and you know. You're going, I know what it, what it is about. But you still get caught into it. And it was like it reeled in and you're just playing with it in this yeah. whole dynamics. It's like, come on, really? I'm playing with this? Come on. You know? And, you know, sometimes Kimberly is around and, and she'll laugh and she goes, what do you preach about or talk about all the time? And I go, I know, I know. I need to get out of it. You do, but, you know, it's like you go through it. Mm. So it's kind of you're, you're, you're almost setting a pattern. I think we talked about this at one point in time is like we're kind of creating a new template. And, and I think part of this is that. And also... I definitely am having a higher appreciation for humanity than what I was going through. That's for sure. So I'm sure that you've gone through a lot of this yourself and maybe not, but um, that was very, very interesting. And the same thing with health issues. I mean, I've always had kind of, my body's never really adopted itself to the, the human condition as well. But uh, I must say everything has kind of hit me in the face lately because the last year and a half again, it's been the body's been actually re rejecting, responding in a way where it says, Oh, I'm not liking this. I'm going to shut this up, this up, this up, whatever. <laughs> and then it's like, Okay, no, I need those organs working, you know. <laughs> it's going to stay on the planet. <laughs> yeah. So it's been interesting, I must say. Yeah, I agree. I, see, I mean, I've watched you since what, last November or something. We've been conversing, talking, and, you know, and it's like, I can see the shift, you know, and, and um, also the embodiment. Uh, the, the year, for me also, the year and a half of um, really stuff coming up too, you know, um, things that it's almost like, for example, you're walking down the street, you fall down, you break your arm. And we were able to get up again, kind of put it together. It was painful as hell at the time um, and carry on walking, right? And conversing and blah, 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 whatever we were doing. Um, and now it's more like the natural response and having to deal with the entire lifespan, right? For in one year um, of not being able to do that anymore, all of a sudden, your arm's broken and you can't even walk anymore because it's too painful, yeah? And, uh, okay, I have got to get it fixed and get the, on the ambulance and, you know, get the paramedics to heal it up and give you drugs <laughs> to, for the pain and whatnot. Um, dealing with that stuff from the past, it's just, it's like so alien, uh, so weird. Um, and also engaging um, really at a human level uh, genuinely uh, and having that higher awareness or more expanded awareness 
understanding what's happening and as you say still being get, getting sucked in dealing with it uh, and it's like I always felt you know people often would say oh you know what do you know about pain what do you know about karma whatever so programs you're you've only been here like you know this lifetime I've had thousands of lifetimes here and they're really stuck right mm -hmm. so the ego and the programs and all that stuff what do you know about it I had the chance to feel the density of that reality of a reality where a person has incarnated in a physicality not necessarily here on the planet but maybe in other dimensions and stuff some of them are very subtle and some of them not necessarily power over others or dark in any way whatever but it still it has a density to it like the the trajectory the linear time trajectory or even the outside of linear time but expanded time trajectory has a kind of a density to it and I had the chance to experience that for just a few seconds and I, I swear to you it if I if I had lasted longer than that I would have died because I couldn't handle that no, mm -hmm. not for a split second and that yeah I mean I've always had a lot of respect for individuals who have chosen to stay here to carry a frequency who have chosen to reincarnate to carry this frequency their own frequency um, and and it's like my hat off to them you know it's like I feel a lot of respect um, and um, yeah it's 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 kind of tiny little I can sense that what we are experiencing is probably tiny compared to what other people go through or have had to do but it does give a reality on and also like a template of being genuine staying within our own frequency even though those things do exist within our field and our physical bodies and our memories and whatnot. And um, it's like those emails are coming in because I've had, um, we have a friend who's checking out and we've had email stuff, uh, messages from people saying, well, you know, I'm done. <laughs> Just, I want out now. I'm done. You know, I'm ready. Um, and it's like, that does come up you know it's like having to or not having to but providing that template that says actually you know knowing that this reality is a dream one could say um, it is totally created by us and when you check out it's just like stepping into another room of your own reality or creation uh, and genuinely bringing that that other perspective or expanded awareness or be able to or even coping mechanisms into this physicality right our own physical bodies our own lives so that it can be provided or accessible to everybody on the planet right mm -hmm. not just the people individuals who are watching this now but generally in the collective i think that's what it is about <laughs> And I, one of the other things that I think is also connected and the reasons why I want to do various conversations with you is that, as you know, I'm retiring from public, um, being a public, you know, delivery of messenger, <laughs> messenger delivery, message delivery system, um, to being more private and just working on my books and teaching classes and stuff. And you're doing the kind of opposite, you know, you're going to go from doing small groups and events and teaching to becoming the voice of empowerment, right? So mm -hmm. like at a larger scale, I see millions of people, you know, on TV show, we've talked about this before, but it's like, mm -hmm. just, it's like, that's the visual that I see, or maybe the request that I see is that it's possible, doable and highly enjoyable. Um, and I think it's related to that too, that we can both do this um, at a, uh, and, and show it, you know, like mm -hmm. show that transformation, show the embodiment of the new paradigm 
really genuinely and with integrity. Because people can sense when you're pissed off and you don't want to, but it says, yeah, have a good life, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. No, you're, you're, I agree with uh, all that you've shared there. And, uh, and, and the thing is too, like you said, the request and, and so forth coming through, um, it has been a request and it's actually been a very strong pushing. Uh, so it's almost, you can't deny it anymore or even ignore it probably be the better word for it. And it's like, okay, now it's time to, to do this. This is what you're here for. Uh, we've been conditioned to, to do this and, uh, and it is, it is, uh, it feels, it's very empowering for me because in essence, when I do that, um, I go into an altered state and, uh, and it's very, it's, so it's a, it's sort of a powerful buzz for me energetically. Uh, so it, it, it does that, but I also feel a very powerful connection with people when that happens and it transmits throughout the whole planet. So everyone is affected in one way or another. So it's, it's a great privilege and of service for me to, to, to do that. One of the things uh, that you're referring to some of the experiences and so forth, and we had talked about it, um, one of the things that uh, uh, one of my higher selves, uh, guide, you want to call it that, that has kind of been around there from day one, mm -hmm. uh, had said, you know, you need, to, uh, you need to really, really understand the human experience. And so you need to, it's not, you're not here to learn from the human experience in a per se on a personal level, but you need to relate with humanity. Right. So therefore, for you to relate, you need to have some of these experiences that others have, right? And uh, so that, you know, so I did have that, except that it wasn't so sticky and it didn't need to be carried out for any long periods of time. So you can move through it a lot quicker. But then it came to a phase, and I remember this quite a few years ago, actually, a few decades ago, when I was asked a request uh, for you to now embody uh, a thousand people, <laughs> one at a time of each culture, of each um, uh, belief uh, systems and so forth. And uh, to go through the aspect of different generations too, mm -hmm. so that you would have a good input for that. That took 10 years to do. Amazing. And for 10 years, I kept, and what I felt, what I saw actually, uh, is that I would step into their physicality uh, and when I say step in, step in into that energy field and able to look at their consciousness and actually feel, experience and see their programs, how they relate and so forth with the different religions or different whatever was going on at the time. And it was a huge eye opener because in essence, it was uh, an opportunity to understand men, women, different cultures, different religion, upbringing, different uh, generations and, and so forth. Um, so it became very key uh, as a component when it came to uh, understanding. So it, I have felt always very comfortable. And, and to me, it's very difficult to, to look at anybody's situation and say, oh, I never understood that. Uh, the only thing I did find is that, uh, that I, 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 I guess I lost touch of it to some degree was the fact of how sticky it can get and how deep it can get and how hard it may be to get out of it, especially if you're doing it yourself uh, right. without any support. So in essence, that was an eye opener because realistically, even when I was doing that other part, there was always that higher aspect of you and there was that you, you that understood and did not need to uh, get engaged in the, in the, the thickness or the heaviness of it uh, and the stickiness, if you want to call it that. But uh, so that this last while, it gave me the opportunity to, to, to uh, feel the stickiness part of it. Yeah. <laughs> of it. But uh, anyways, yes. Uh, and, you know, uh, I do uh, feel that uh, our connection and our interaction is, is actually quite uh, beneficial for all of us at this point in time to, to kind of do that transitional point because i mean i know you mentioned that well you never really um wanted to be in the uh in the mainstream uh and, uh, and be public if you want to call it that because i i think you kind of felt that you always wanted to be kind of 
out of the public uh, arena. But somebody that you know very well didn't step up to the plate in time. <laughs> <laughs> so in essence, you, you had to do your part. But that period of time, I also realized it was uh, much uh, needed in my respect, uh, in my aspect of things, and also in yours too. So that that was great um, in that regards. But um, yeah, and uh, creating this new template in in essence of how we were experiencing it and how quickly we can move through it, uh, it really uh, sets the pace for for many people. Because one of the things I find, you know. As much as it gets sticky, and I know that uh, the mind and, and the ego mind specifically and all the other things that support it uh, becomes very uh, um, difficult to maneuver through it. In essence, uh, unless we actually feel that it has to be that heavy for us to learn from it, it's not that hard to move through it, to move in and out of it. It's like a movie, right? You can say, well, you know, Sometimes you put on a movie and you're watching the movie and you get, you get a good idea of, about the movie and, and the experience with it within the first little while. Right. But then we have a tendency to say, oh, I want to watch it some more. And then you tend to watch it. You get obsessed to watch it to the end. Was it really necessary? Not really. But in essence, you wanted to get, you know, that saturation really stay in it. Right. But at, what happens is as we're moving forward and as we are going through this transformation, as the movies come in, as we engage in them, we'll find that we can move through it a lot quicker. So we don't have to watch the whole thing. So if there's a dramatic situation with a family dynamics, we're not going to get caught up in it and say, oh, I got to go into the drama and this is going to you know, mm. involve a lot of people and keep going into it and I got to keep feeding it and so forth. You'll find it's like, oh, okay, this is fine. You get the gist of what's going on. You get whatever you need to get on and then say, okay, I'm not choosing to participate any longer. I'm done. You guys want to play there? Keep playing. Have fun. <laughs> yes. I'm not going to deny it. I'm not going to tell you that you can't do it and that I have to stop you from doing it. <laughs> and, and I found that even in my own experience, many years ago as we were going through it as the family chose to stay in the particular dynamics i didn't have any judgment for them it's like you want to play there that's fine you know and when they say well you know we want to be for you to be partaking and i said no i played enough i'm done yeah i don't need to play with this right so uh you get to that point where and this is happens everywhere from work to whatever else that we engage with with people and our own particular stories we don't have to play it out so what i find and i'm sure you find it yourself in the past everything took was very slow and it took a long time for us to move through it and even get what we need to get out of it as our own learning expansion experience and so forth and now we seem to everything's like accelerated as accelerated, you know yeah and not only that it's intensified so an actual fact is that you get the most impactful and uh right at the beginning so you don't have to linger it for a long time it's like oh, okay I got it. I I got it. It. <laughs> and um you get you know sometimes like people like to watch horror movies and whatever else and know. they feed off it right i don't like horror movies <laughs> so now the horror movie comes like blasts you right at the beginning and then it's like oh okay i got it no need this anymore. <laughs> and that's how it kind of plays out in our own mm. uh, personal experience with whatever is playing out now that and that's why when people say well it's, it's much more intensity to the point that you can't actually ignore it right and you know as much as we could you know pacify it for some and and explain it to death too and say well this has to happen you know i'm going yeah. through the healing process or whatever it is no, and, you don't and, have it, to <laughs> exactly and now it's like okay this really hurts like you were saying about the arm right and I like, okay i gotta take care of this i can't put it aside i have you know stop whatever i'm doing and go to the hospital and get this taken care exactly. of exactly we said it right yeah. yeah because what happens uh, it's like we ignored it so the bone heals but in the not in the right place yeah and then you have to break it again exactly <laughs> get it done and then the second time it's uh, it's not as uh, pleasant because now you yeah. know it's going to be broken when you fall the first time it breaks and right. it's like oh okay i didn't know it was coming whatever <laughs> now you go okay this this is not right i have to get it fixed now i know i have to break it so oh, and it actually is even more impactful yeah. when you when you have to go through that whole uh, process yeah 
I like the ex example you used of the movie theater or the movies. You know, you get it, the full whack, you know. I've noticed recently from TV shows and movies that the level of gruesome violence and just degradation is huge. Like, oh my God, huge. Not every movie. And the opposite is also true. Movies that you go, whoa, you know, these people are super enlightened or they're really, really aware. But uh, Larry and I went to the cinema a few months ago and um, we bought a ticket. I think our movie has, was full or, was, you know, that one we wanted to see or maybe, I can't remember what happened. We ended up trying to see this other movie. And again, like the first few seconds, the first few minutes of the movie just whacked it just full on with all that degradation, violence, blood, guts, and, you know, even the sexual degradation and everything. And we were standing there like going, what the hell is this, you know? And we looked at each other, we got up at the same time and left, you know, it's just like, I'm not going to play this. I'm not going to mm -hmm. sit here for the next two hours and watch this shit, you know? Oops. <laughs> um, so we got out. And it was like, whoa, that was intense, new. But also they actually, I'm not going to play this and I'm not going to play with this. I'm not going to be in this field of energy. As so we were leaving, I looked at the audience and it was a very interesting set of people. Um, it kind of like, I don't know, it kind of vibrated with the movie, you know? Mm. And we got out and we looked around at the other movies that were happening and you know, we just walked into another movie basically and that movie was really super awesome really nice and I was looking around at the people there and that like color and demeanor and everything reflected mm -hmm. the actual movie too it was super interesting so it's like yeah we have that choice in real life you know we have that choice to just step away and not get engaged um, the way I see it is like realities or dramas or whatever human realities are created by the people involved in them and people are always 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 trying to recruit others to make their reality real and more powerful right mm -hmm. always trying to do that continuously and it's up to us to choose to add energy and our own power to that reality creation or like that movie, just step away and oh, I'm not going to participate in this, you know. There was a situation also that reminded me of what you said with regards to family dramas. Um, again, a few months ago, maybe even a year now, uh, I contacted a relative that owed me money for many, many years back. And um, yeah, it was about a year ago now. And she decided to go all nasty on me and sent her daughter um, to send me really, really nasty, insulting emails. And I've seen this pattern um, with regards to this side of the family. They act like Jekyll and Hyde, you know, if, you're, if you comply, they'll be super nice. Um, but if you don't, oh my gosh, the claws come out. There's also a lot of programming because they're extremely powerful mystics, this family, right? It's the female side, the female lineage. Extremely powerful mystics, extremely powerful seers, and, um, and they don't call back when they're pissed off. And um, this girl, the daughter, started sending me these really, really nasty emails. And I said, listen, all I want is the money back. I don't want that debt. I don't want that energy connection. Um, and I'm not going to engage with all these insults that you're sending. I'm not going to play. And I use those words. Mm -hmm. I know this is part of our family pattern, whatever. So I'm not going to play with it. Um, I think it's very rude of you and um, uncouth, uh, the words that you're using. Uh, but I'm not going to play. I'm not going to answer it, defend myself, or attack you. So just sort out the payment, you know. And be on my way, you know. And this kept on. She kept sending stuff like ten emails or something, um, and I that was my response on each one. Eventually, she paid, right? Very begrudgingly, um, clear the debt, 
and um and that was the end of that i said oh thank you very much it's very much appreciated and goodbye <laughs> but it was like that call to an ancient pattern that they've been carrying for many many generations and um and we can we don't have to engage i find also that if at any time i feel offended um then it's my ego right yeah. because we don't i mean if somebody insults you calls your name or calls you whatever's uh it's really their reality that's how they see you right but what does it matter it doesn't really matter how they see you you know what you're like so it doesn't really matter right um and um one of the things that in facebook for example when people start insulting or they come into my site you know the website the facebook page thing and um if i post something that they don't agree with and they'll start really going into righteousness and with insults and everything and i ban them right and they get really 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 annoyed because i ban them you know it's like this is you know a, you're censoring me and free speech and whatever and i'm like no, this is a private page. There's no free speech here. And also, it's like, if I don't want to make them wrong, right? And by removing myself from their reality, they get to be 100% right. And mm -hmm. that's good, right? <laughs> They're right. That's true. And, and, and there is no wrong. Uh, it's yeah. their reality. And that's what they want to play out with the reality. So exactly. if that's where they want to play, then they don't need to be in your reality. But no. the thing is, you not engaging and you doing taking steps like that you're basically breaking a pattern for them right and now if they choose to play with it and and utilize it that's fine but if not that's okay too but you've <laughs> at least at least opened the door for a pattern break in, in right respect. the same thing like you were saying with the family dynamics that was you know to pay for for the money because as you were replying without engaging you weren't fueling it what you were doing is actually degrading their patterns to the point where they actually were uh, advancing themselves bit by bit and noticing their own patterns uh, of what was there right so in essence uh, this is one of the things and it's a test for us too in a way if you want to call it that i, I don't usually like the word of, test but in a way it's like okay it gives us an opportunity to see if we have any engagement or any programs in ourselves because like you said if we get involved if we react that's just us being triggered with our own little program stories and so forth right oh, so absolutely yeah yeah and uh, as long as that's not there then you can just be very neutral uh, about it and then that new level of neutrality and that level of communication is actually the upgrade that you're participating in with not only the family dynamics on a collective scale too so uh and this this is where it becomes where everybody as they uh, you know start disengaging from you know the dramas and and getting involved with all of that then that actually creates more uh changes in the patterns so that people actually can get out of it easier so the four forerunners may find it sometimes difficult but uh, the ones that follow when they do choose if they do to choose to actually break their patterns that the doors are open it's like there's a path there's a map here's the map this is how you do it it's very easy and even if it's not communicated it's already in their dna being programmed in their their operating system and and, and the collective uh, matrix and so forth so it's all there at their disposal plus we're all connected as one anyways so uh, one resources uh, everybody's exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly yeah I like that you know it's like um, that resource you know is that I think that's what it's about um, I feel that when there's many many people who are feeling the call to become visible not necessarily at the level that we're doing, like, you know, I have done, but I'm removing myself from. <laughs> and you're starting that really visibility, that real visibility without apology with, and, and in full integrity. Um, and a lot of people are feeling that being visible within their workplace, being visible within their families, 
will be invisible with their skills and abilities. You know, maybe they have healing skills or um, clairvoyance or they can move stuff around, to, you know, all sorts of stuff um, that they have, the skills that they have and that they have suppressed or maybe they keep secret because for thousands of years, the programs, especially the physical bodies have been programmed through torture, being burnt alive and all that stuff, that if you show any type of these expanded awareness capacities and proof that you are the creator of reality, um, you'll be you know, castigated, punished. Mm -hmm. um, and now I think I feel in the collective a huge request for individuals to step up and be visible. Yeah. And also, even if you don't have any skills, healing or whatever, just show that higher frequency, that light that's inside that is you without apology and without fear. I remember in 2010, one of the things that I had to deal with was fear, right? It's like, and it just came out of nowhere as far as I was concerned, but I could really sense and feel it was my physical bodies and also the collective. When you become public, it's almost like you're going to be attacked, you're going to be killed, you're going to be um, whatever, you know, um, life made hard for you and all these things. And as I was looking at it, and I actually got death threats, you know, for reals. and. It was like, oh, whatever, so, you know, it's like, you can't, it's, it's whatever. <laughs> Without falling into fear, if you fall into fear, you're engaging with it and you're kind of agreeing to it, that it's possible, right? But if you don't, you don't fall into fear. It has to be with your own agreement. And, um, and it's like that fear of being attacked and uh, tortured and everything. There's a collective memory of it. Um, there's there was so much of it happening and even up to very recently there was so much of it happening um, and it's like as individuals feel that request to become themselves to show themselves be visible um, to just give them that example of yeah just process your fear and you'll be you'll be good you'll be great it'll be actually really really good life will improve and become nicer and prettier and uh, amazing right if you do if you actually embody that um anyways <laughs> rumbling on a little bit now but it's like i really want that to come through I, i'd really like that to come through well i mean the thing even with the fear uh which is a good one because it's huge and most people uh, deal with, with, with that and I've dealt with it and still time to time still have parts of that aspect of it coming through. Um, my fear is more self-directed in a sense where, you know, you fear, oh, maybe I'm not going to do as well as I need to to assist people and, and so forth, which is not, there's no truth to it because in essence, everybody gets whatever they need, when they need it, how they need it and so forth. And whatever is going to be shared is going to be shared perfectly. But the, the whole thing with around the fear uh, aspect of it, uh, being themselves, right? right? Because we're all, we're all, um, we're all beautiful expressions. Okay. And each expression is unique uh, because each expression uh, colors the whole. Okay. So everyone needs to be that. So the biggest fear that has people is, is being uh, judged, uh, mm. being uh, exiled from the family dynamics or groups or friendship or whatever it is, or that they're not going to be accepted. And, uh, and when I say accepted, accepted into their group, and then they feel that they're going to be alone uh, in, in, in the world sort of thing. Uh, or not. And then, of course, the, the fear of not being good enough and all that stuff comes up, right? And then also the other part, like you were saying, speaking out and, and then being you know, tortured or whatever may play out. But it all plays back to not being yourself, right? Yeah. And what's so powerfully interesting is that 
being yourself is your highest order of, of, of expression that you're here to do. But, you know, say in the family dynamics, and this was from my own personal experience, but also with many people I saw. I saw. Mm. When you are being genuinely yourself, there may be in the beginning a rejection that may take place. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that may be from part of your experience, plus your, your, you know, you're dealing with the collective part and then the family dynamics. However, if you stay in that genuinity of your being yourself, the people around you start noticing, wait a minute, what's going on? You know, by they're being themselves, they're making their own choices. And they seem to be doing quite well, feeling good about themselves and so forth. And they're not caught up in the drama. To the point where they're saying, well, maybe I should start looking at some of that myself. Mm. Or they may even ask you or ask the person and say, well, you know, how did you manage to just be able to be your own self, you know, without, you know, following the rules? And, and then that uh, accentuates a, a movement in their own transformation. Because I noticed it in my own family dynamics. I mean, for me, it was very interesting because I never bought into the whole game of, you know, I'm from an Italian background. And uh, so there's that, there's that particular upbringing, a very old, old uh, upbringing of, you know, authoritative and so forth and, and, and whatever. And one of the things that came up in the family all the time is that this is what you need to do. This is, this is the way it is. My point was always who made it up. <laughs> right. You know, exactly. Who said so? right yeah and where did that so, come from yeah exactly <laughs> uh, so that kept coming up all the time so and i loved when when it got to a little further because my mother was a little more creative in that respect and she would say well god said so <laughs> right so that was supposed to be the, the ultimate the authority yeah uh, ultimate authority and i go okay then show me how and and uh where well you know there's all these scriptures and so forth and i said who wrote it right you know <laughs> And, and then on and on, I'm not going to elaborate on all of it, but I challenged all of that, right? Yeah. And eventually some of them, I noticed even later on, started to go thinking, well, I never saw it that way or whatever it is. And they started to shift in their way of looking at it. So their, their viewpoint just opened up a little bit more in that regard. However, you can, I still continue doing whatever I needed to do along the way being you know, whatever expression I wanted to be. And mm -hmm. one of the things that kept coming up is, and I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but uh, in your own experience, but I, I know other people may have too, is why can't you be normal? Which was the model that I keep, kept hearing from my family. Well, mm -hmm. why can't you just be normal, right? <laughs> <laughs> or, and you will hear it from other people too. And, yeah. I, and, and, the, thing, and the thing is, well, what is normal? Mm. what just because a bunch of people have agreed that this is acceptable that becomes normal no i'd like to see a new norm that has no boundaries so right. i'm creating my own new norm right yeah. so that's that's fine for me right uh and that actually was also instrumental for many people too by by even going in that way so what my my message has always been with people be yourself because that's what you're here to do. Yeah. And don't worry about what anybody else says because they're trying to keep you with them so they can confirm uh, that their way of life is good. Because what happens with people, and a lot of people have doubt in themselves. Like they're living a life and they have this level of doubt. It's like, eh, I'm not really sure this is the way of life, but everybody else is doing it. I need to do the same thing. So when someone else comes along and is basically challenging that aspect of it and they're not engaging with them because when somebody comes up to you and says, well, this is the way life is and so forth, they, they're actually not telling you what to do in a say. They want a confirmation that it's acceptable for you too so that they can feel good. Even though they're just adding another layer of, okay, you know, they don't feel good. And when I say good, it doesn't totally resonate with them. Right. They want more people to say so that they can actually squash that non-resonation, if that's mm. a word, 
<laughs> within themselves so that they can actually still continue to convince themselves, okay, I'm on the right path or on a path that is acceptable. But, but not cooperating in that respect, then it's, you're, you're actually breaking down some of their layers and I go, oh, now I got to look at what I feel inside because <laughs> I don't really resonate with this either, right? Yeah. Uh, and I found that with, you know, with, even with the religious background, upbringing and so forth. Uh, I mean, I, most of the time I challenged it in, in, in all of that. And I noticed that most people would go to, you know, the rituals, the churches, whatever they were doing, and they didn't resonate with the message so much. But, oh, I better not question this because, you know, the rest of the family expects them to go there. But when somebody is stepping out of it, and, and they'll even ask you a question and say, well, why don't you accept this? Well, because this doesn't resonate with me. And I go, yeah, that doesn't resonate with me either, right? <laughs> and so you're doing that. So that's how it becomes so important, specifically now that things are accelerating, to be truly yourself. And there is no self of you that is incorrect or incongruent or is not acceptable because you're not here to be the same. You're right. not here to be locked in either because who you are and what you're being yourself is changing all the time too. So it's not even saying, okay, I have arrived. This is who I am. <laughs> no, you arrived to one level, but then there's many other levels of expansion and expressions that you can, you can make because you're never the same anyways. You're changing all the time. So, mm -hmm. That's where it becomes so powerful and instrumental. And, you know, people say, well, we want to change the way we uh, experience the human experience. But yes, you do that by being yourself first and foremost, and then experiment and play and, ex and be make that as an adventure. Because life is really an adventure. You know, it's not a... It's an experience. Know, it's not, yes. We're not here to, 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 you know, most people feel that we're here for survival. It's like I, I got dropped in. I, I've been thrown here. And now I got to see if I can make it out of here without screwing up. Right? <laughs> but it isn't that way. It's like you, you, first of all, you chose to be here. You've agreed to, to participate. And then you came here to really, really play in the playground and see mm. how much adventure and how much more expansion, how much more you can be to really discover who you really are beyond any level. Because there's no, no level because we're constantly expanding and so is the ultimate sourceness of all source, if you want to call it that, is, is, is not rigid and it's not limited and it's not stagnant. It is always expanding. So here you right. are, you're that expression that you've come here to play. So that's why I use the word play all the time because that's what we did. We came here to play. And I see the planet and all planets as a playground and a schoolyard at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The playground or the, the, the game, you know, I call life a game a lot too. Um, and what different games people are playing and stuff like that. One of the things that I see also when people start being themselves is that often they might fall for programs that are actually themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I've noticed is that when you give permission or allowance to somebody to fully express themselves, they will often show or go into really negative programs and express those instead. I have no idea where that came from, but they will show you the worst of themselves. But it's like, actually, what you say is that that's the worst of yourself. That's not actually true. Because <laughs> I can see your genuine self is pure light, you know, high frequency light. So what you're expressing right now is a lot of stuff, but it's not yourself. And um, it's almost like people say, well, if people accept me at my worst, then they'll accept all of me. And that worst is not real, you know, mm. that's made up. And it's like, what's that about? <laughs> like, what yeah. is that about? Yeah. That's kind of a rebellious uh, scenario there where it's just basically saying, okay, uh, I can be myself, then I can just do anything. Because I hear that all the time because I hear sometimes they say, oh, so we... I can be myself and I can do anything. I can go kill people, whatever. I go, well, if that's what you want to do and you want to have fun with that, go have fun with that. However, <laughs> you'll notice that it doesn't, it's not a frequency that you're going to be able to sustain or even want to feel with it, uh, involved in it. But, you know, if that's where you feel that you need to go that far, then go ahead and have that far. But you'll, you'll realize that, you know, at some point, that's not truly your uh, 
authentic expression of yourself, right? right? Right. And then they say, well, you know, how about if I hurt somebody in a long way? I say, well, you can't hurt anybody because in essence, it has to be a mutual agreement to go through any particular dance. But, you know, so, um, and that was funny because uh, I was doing small groups some years ago, quite a few years ago, actually. And one of the groups I had, and then this is when I was living in the city, um, I had uh, a, a group that I would take through the city and we would look around and, and, and so forth. And one of the exercise was to look at people and see when they're being authentic and whenever they're not. And um, one of the things I, I noticed, I said, just observe. We have no judgment. Just, just be the observer, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things we noticed that, you know, uh, some of the, and then we did speak to some people or young people actually, because they were a little bit more open to it and they were less in a rush to get somewhere. Uh, and you would see some of them would dress gothic or whatever else. And, and then you would ask them and say, well, uh, do you feel like you're being your genuine self? And uh, they would say, oh, yes, I am. Uh, you know, I, I'm being my genuine self, right? And then I'd say, okay, um, so what's so genuine about it? Well, I'm dressing the way I want to, to dress. And I go, well, who came up with that look, you know? Uh, well, I came up with the look. And I said, well, no, look around. There's others <laughs> you know, dressed like you, and uh, they're carrying a certain energy and so forth. Is that truly really you? Or is that you're just trying to replicate something that you feel at this point in time? I say, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. You could choose to do that too. However, when you're saying you're being your genuine self, the question is, ask yourself, are you really truly being your genuine self? Are you doing this because you really truly feel that way? Or uh, is that something temporarily that so that you can now go from one group go to another group that's a little bit more exclusive and maybe a smaller, uh, uh, you know, attendance or, or, or uh, uh, participants, if you want to call it that, uh, you know, and, and, and it was interesting because they would reflect on that and they go, well, yeah, maybe I'm not, you know, yeah. and genuinely being yourself is you don't look around and say, well, what can I replicate or copy? And, and not even saying what I don't, I, I don't, want to be anything like this it's just made how do i actually truly feel and what how do i truly want to express without looking at any other group and saying well i'll take a piece here a piece there a piece there and make myself out of this because it's similar to something that you had mentioned some time ago is that is it new thought or old thought or is it re recycled thought right <laughs> so if you're looking at other people's expression you can choose to say, well, I'm going to take that expression for a little while and just see how it feels, mm. which is fine. However, don't adopt to it. You don't need to adopt it if you don't want to. Uh, but just say, okay, great. How do I truly feel? And be okay with whatever that plays out for you and just represent that, that aspect of it and not getting caught up in, in, in any of that. So when you start asking that question, you really, really start looking inside and and what happens is you start to look at some of the layers of stories. The programs. Just, yeah. yeah, the programs. And, go, yeah. Oh. and what's interesting with the programs, sometimes you find is that I need to be accepted somewhere, you mm. know? I, oh, I, yeah. In the 90s? I think it was the 90s. Could have been the 80s. I think it was the 80s. I had a friend who was an anarchist, right? Mm -hmm. And he really came that I'd be an anarchist. So he took me to a meeting of anarchists and they all look the same. <laughs> they all wear the same type of clothes and stuff. I was sitting there going, hmm, okay, so what did you say anarchism was again? <laughs> I said, have you seen yourself in the mirror? Yeah, yeah. And he was like, you know, yeah, yeah. It's and, they, and, they, and the thing is, when they join a group of that nature, of any nature really, they look around and they don't want to stand out. So they, they try to all look the same and talk the same. Right. And, and I'm sure you've noticed, even in, in meetings sometimes, people don't want to speak out anyway. So they don't even want to ask the question. That's getting less and less now uh, right. as we go along. But don't want to ask the question because they don't want to be stand out or to look different or to you know be judged by the others so right. they all want a conformity and then even though they're in a, in more of a smaller group they want to com still conform to some degree mm. right so yeah you're right about what you were saying in in, in essence with the group you know they they all tend to look the same or feel the same and you know yeah say the same things if you want to do that but then you know, the part is that they, 
they, they do that because they want to confer. So if they take a path, for example, then they want confirmation. And that's why they'll right. go into a group. Right. And the, the subscribing to that reality, right? The more people who subscribe to reality, the stronger it becomes. Yes. Right? Whether it's daily, you know, lifetime, whatever, or, uh, you know, group of idealists, uh, different ideals or religion or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what you look at it, even the groups, the groups actually are very strong facilitators because in essence, there's a set of rules for any group that you go into yeah. and you can't really go outside the, that, that the parameters that are set. You can't question it. This right. was the thing too, because I noticed even in religion, because we were involved with the, you know, the Roman Catholic thing, at least the family way. Uh, to me, I, I, you know, especially when I was younger too, I don't even bother now, but you know, uh, and at that time, you know, I, I wanted to have a conversation with the ones that apparently were dictating the idea. So, but they weren't open to discuss no, anything. No. You couldn't, you know, and then if you ask them questions, then, then they... That they, was a the, sin. Was, yes, not only a sin, that you're, oh, you're being tempted by, uh, you know, the no, devil. The, devil. <laughs> the devil's talking through you. You're being played with that. And, you know, and I would say, well... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know? yeah. Oh, the devil thing. My sister had an, um, an experience with that. My, our grandmother was very religious, Catholic as well. And my sister was excellent at manifesting things, right? And one of the things, for example, we would be playing in the yard and all of a sudden it was a hot day, whatever. So my sister would say, who wants ice cream? So, so my brother and I would say, me, me, me. You know, we want ice cream because she was the, older, the oldest. And says, okay, um, okay, we're going to get somebody to come over with ice cream because we didn't have any money. In those days, they didn't give allowance or anything, right? They wouldn't even let you out of the house where we yeah. lived. <laughs> um, and there was a situation where um, my grandmother came in and said, um, I can't remember what comment she made. And my sister said, oh, no, because we're going to have ice cream soon. And she said, we don't have any ice cream. She said, no, no, there's somebody coming with ice cream. Oh, and she actually said, what flavors do you want, right? So we decided what flavors we wanted and everything. And we decided we wanted an ice cream that came with, it looked like a rainbow. So they have a different oh, yeah. flavors, right? We decided on that one. So she even gave those details to my grandmother and she was like, you know, I don't know, no, no, you know, guys, you know, we're not going to go for ice cream or whatever. And about half an hour later, a friend of the family arrives and he didn't know why, but he arrived with a tub of ice cream with <laughs> rainbow colors in it, right? For the kids, you know? And my grandmother just got completely triggered and accused or told my sister to go and pray i can't ha i can't remember how many hail marys and yeah. the other one there's a hail mary and there's like there was, there was a, the our father the glory father. Of the, yeah, yeah the our um, fathers yeah. right she had to go and do so many i can't remember how many because that was the devil's work <laughs> And it's like, oh my gosh, you know. And to us, it's like, no, that's not the devil. It's, it's ice cream. <laughs> we yeah, want exactly. It, so we How did we get that in there? It's I know. Just it's just ice cream. Yeah. It was like, yeah, the devil's work. And I think that's part of that programming, like very, very deep programming. And to us, it's like a millennium ago, right? That people used mm -hmm. to believe those things or that people would suffer through manifesting those items or expressing their knowing but some people are actually experiencing it today in different countries so you know like different countries around the world but even even in different cities in our own countries which are supposed to be like advanced you know modern countries uh, or within families or religions but even in that sense if you don't agree with it, it's not going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, it's really important not to fall into fear or and not to fall into agreement with those things and genuinely start being visible again, being visible with regards to the clothes and things. I think, um, you know, clothes are like an expression of, 
who we want to be perceived as or even our, for ourselves how do we want to perceive ourselves and um and often it's like it's very much a communication system as well for others so one of the exercises i like to teach people is sit in a you know go people watching sit in a cafeteria somewhere with your sunglasses so they don't see you staring right <laughs> with your ipad in front of you or a book or something and your cup of coffee or smoothie whatever and just people watch and observe yourself and how you are or what agendas you have or how you are perceiving the other so for example uh, a lady walks by with um, really high fashion stuff, designer shoes, designer handbag, designer glasses, hair that's, you know, $300 hair to, you know, walks by. When you look at her, do you get any judgments? Do you get any feelings? Do you get any emotions? What thoughts go through your head? And just observe those because those are the programs, right? Yeah. And uh, do you feel, whoa, she would make a really good friend to me because I love all those things. Or do you feel, you know, stuck up bitch, you know, whatever is, you know, what, mm -hmm. what kind of things go through your mind? As a man, would you think, um, oh my gosh, she's totally out of my league. Or would you think, whoa, there goes my future ha wife, you know, how does, what kind of things? Because those are the agendas also. Um, I have a course, you know, called the Lo sex love and relationships in the new paradigm and what that's one of the big exercises there because most people only see what they believe to be true and they don't see anybody else right they really don't genuinely don't see others uh genuinely others who could be compatible for them <laughs> i mean i can say that from my own experience you know larry and i've been friends for years and i never saw him like literally like that he was my sister <laughs> he was like my sister um and then he became my brother and then when i saw him that he was actually a man he's like whoa what is that about you know and how come i didn't see him but he obviously he, he neither of us were ready for many years but it's genuinely that it's like when we perceive people oh and i always get like messages you know from people or when I used to do sessions and stuff, which I don't anymore, people would say, and it didn't matter if it was a man or a woman, you know, they would say, I'm looking for a relationship, but all women are crazy and asleep. Or I'm looking for a relationship, but all men are crazy and asleep. You know, it's like, those people know each other. <laughs> <laughs> How can they not see each other, you know? Um, and it, it's like that. It's, it's a lot like that. We don't see. So this exercise, this little thing that you can do, just playing around, um, to just genuinely look at somebody and look at your own programs, not them, but actually your own programs that come up when you're looking at them. Um, it's really, really interesting. There was a... I... Whenever it's like one of these things that happens, right? I've been in many, many countries of the world. And um, one of the patterns that happens, it doesn't matter whether I'm in Paris, Madrid, uh, Frankfurt, uh, Valparaiso in Chile, or here in the Mecca Reservation, uh, Sacramento, California. It doesn't really matter where I am. When I'm in the street, looking around, walking around, whatever, invariably, somebody will come up for me for directions. Mm. Right? They'll ask me for directions. Sometimes in languages I don't understand <laughs> because it's not my country. <laughs> I don't speak their language. And it's like, and I mention it, people who are with me, they laugh because, you know, in Germany, I'm small and dark, you know, I'm not exactly tall and blonde, right? And in England, well, England's more multicultural, so you could pass as a local. Um, and here, for example, at the Macau Reservation, we were buying ice cream, and there was about 20 locals there, right? Macaus. 
with their kids, you know, everything. Um, some of them were, yeah, some of them were blonde and blue eyed. Some of them are a lot darker than I am. And, but it was like a huge, broad um, group of individuals. And um, this car stops by with two tourists on it. They get out of the car, walk right through the crowd towards me and ask me for directions. <laughs> and I had been here, what, two days or something. And it's like that energy, why does it happen? Because when I, I walk through life like this place, or do I accept this place? Do I, uh, will I, you know, resonate with it or do I accept it? But it's almost like everywhere, it's my place, right? And everybody is my family. You know, it doesn't really matter who they are, what color they are, what religion, whatever. And then they get to reject if they want to. And then sometimes I get to know them and I don't like them. And that is true. Some of them, some of the realities on Genta Plain do not resonate with me. And I do reject them, right? But not originally. At first, I don't, right? And I think that that's that energy um, because some individuals will feel left out or that they have to um, almost uh, validate their belonging to a geographical location or even to a family, mm -hmm. you know? They were even born or adopted into the family, but they have to all the time, you know, like prove that they belong there. Exactly. Instead, of, instead of that place belongs to me, right? Or that family belongs to me, or these people belong to me. <laughs> so it's, it's interesting that expression too. Um, I think that if more or more of us start living from that place of, uh, expanded um, what's it called embracing of the environment and people but with not being naive about it you know mm -hmm. so if you have an experience that's negative you do you can reject it's fine and it's actually good <laughs> at the moment to do that uh, as we walk through uh, and embody our truth and our true selves um, yeah, so anyway, we went from clothes to environments, but it's like when you choose what you're wearing, right, and your clothes and stuff, to do it consciously, and I think that's what we're kind of dancing around. When we do it actually consciously, oh, I like that group, I like the way that they, and I want to express that I want to become, or I carry those same ideals, and therefore going to wear these clothes today so that I can express that joining of ideals or whatever's. Um, and it's like doing it consciously gives us an enormous amount of freedom and power. And, but unfortunately, a lot of us do it unconsciously. You know? mm -hmm. The clothes we wear, whatever's, we do it unconsciously. We don't choose consciously. So I think that's the difference. Yeah, and it, it, we take on a certain default again to be accepted, quantified, whatever, and and, and that aspect rather than it's a, 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 a diligent choice to say, okay, this is what I want to express and experience because I want to feel what that feels like today. Right. And so it's like I'm going to put this color on because I want to express this color, experience this color for the day, right? Yeah. Rather than I put it on because, you know, it's just automatically I need to fit in or something of that nature, right? Yeah, so there's a difference is the conscious and unconscious, like you said. Mm. Uh, one uh, is uh, is is you know, you're you're directing the other one. You're kind of defaulting into by programs and so forth, right? Yes. So I should wear this today because so that way I won't stand out because everybody's going to be dressed up today or something of that nature. Or, or you know, even the the thing is too. I was I can't remember who said it. I think it was Wayne Dyer or something. He was talking about some some young gentleman that he decided uh, he was invited to go and speak somewhere or no actually just attend I think it was and um, so there was a, a really uh, fancy affair where everybody was in tuxedos and, and ball gowns and so forth 
And this gentleman just walked in with jeans and a t-shirt and so forth. And he was walking around and everybody's judging, them, judging this kid, right? This young man that was walking around. And I think the question was, uh, what do you think this gentleman is thinking about the young boy is thinking about what everybody else is thinking about him, right? And uh, so one of the answers that come back and he says, well, he's, he has a, an attitude where he doesn't care. Like, I don't care what, uh, what anybody thinks. This is, but how freeing is that? And uh, in actual fact, the young gentleman didn't even notice what anybody else was wearing. Because <laughs> that's where we want to be. It's like, we don't notice, we don't need to notice what anybody else is wearing. You right. just expressing yourself the way it is. So he showed up there with whatever he wanted to. He wasn't going to go in there and say, well, you know, everybody's going to dress that way. I'm going to dress the way I want. And I just want to. Right. Uh, it wasn't that, a statement. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a statement. And it wasn't a, a rejection to what it is. Uh, so there was not a, 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 an egotistic uh, energy around that. It was just, they didn't even notice that he was different mm. than anybody else in that respect. And that's really what we're trying to do as that level of expression that we go into is that uh, we're not, like even when you take on a group, you're saying, well, for example, I want to join the rebels now, for example, I, we're going to all act the same, but you're just basically joining another clan. In essence, true expression is, it doesn't matter what's going on. You're just going to go accordingly to what you feel that, that, that moment, right? And, mm -hmm. and then go from that. <clears throat> the other part that you had mentioned too about, you know, yourself and saying, well, you know, you may reject somebody um, because or not like someone, go, you know, uh, playing a certain role. Um, one of the things I want to clarify, I mean, the rejection, as, as you pointed out, is really not about the rejection of the person or yeah. anything like that. It's just yeah. you don't want to engage in the energy that they're choosing to play at because you're not right. there anymore, right? It's like, right. oh, I don't need to play there, right? right. So you, you don't. At this time, it's, a, it's like, for example, like people invite us or, or people get invited to uh, even a family dynamics, right? Uh, they can turn around and and feel and say, well, do I want to participate or not in this family dynamics, right? Do I want to go there? Mm. Not rejecting the family. Say, well, I, you know, I don't like my family. I hate them or whatever it is. No, you know, what they're going to be playing there is not something I'm feeling up to going to play with today. Right. <laughs> it's really just a choice, right? Do right. I engage with that uh, energy or not? Now, in some cases, you may feel like I'm going to show up, but I'm still not going to engage in all the other dr drama <laughs> going on, right? Yeah, uh, it was funny because I'll give you an incident with um, I know it's slightly a uh, uh, different relationship. My mother used to always engage with what everybody else was thinking, you know, and so whenever she used to call sometimes uh, at times, she would start, oh, did you hear about this? Did you hear about that? Did you look at who's doing this and who's doing that and whatever. And so um, and that wasn't something I wanted to engage in. So I would use the reminder and say, that, Mom, if that's all you're going to talk about, then the conversation doesn't go anywhere. We're not going to go anywhere because I'm not interested in whatever you're going, right? And so it took a little while for her to get the message. And eventually uh, what happens, it was funny because sometimes she would call and she would start, oh, did you hear such and such and such? And then without me even saying a single word, she'd go, oh, yeah, you don't want to know anything about this stuff. <laughs> And then she would stop. And then, yeah. uh, so mom, what else do you have to share? And believe it or not, in her view, there was not much to say because it was always about something else, right? Mm -hmm. So the conversations were really short. And then I'd say, well, mom, how are you feeling? You know, <laughs> rather than, you know, guess who's doing what? It doesn't matter to me. Right. So, so you just kind of break the pattern. And then when you do that, they, they kind of condition themselves and say, oh, okay, I don't need to engage in that. And that happens too when you're going into the, uh, the family dynamics or work mm -hmm. scenarios or wherever you're going. It's up to you if you want to engage in the energy, the, the, the whatever is playing out. But you never reject the people because we're all one. We all love each other. We we're all see beautiful expressions of ourselves. The ego mind has a different version of that because mm. the ego mind starts to, you know, when, when it's active and it has a lot of these programs still active, then it'll just turn around. I like this person. I don't like that person, whatever it is. <laughs> yes. And then, of course, categorize and then, you know, have yeah. 
And if it goes far enough, you can put hatred, you can put resentment, you can put judgment of all sorts, you know. <laughs> you, get color. you can get colorful. But that's still part of an experience, but we outgrow that as we move forward, that's for sure. Yeah, I think we do. I mean, it doesn't start that way right away, you know. It's like a process, but we do grow into it. Definitely, we can, it's baby steps. <laughs> Well, you know, the thing is, Anelia, and I'm sure you re realize this, and most people are starting to realize it in, 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 that I'm, you know, kind of opening your eyes of sort of thing. Our natural state is not the game that we're playing. Exactly. Our natural state is very loving, very peaceful, very playful, very light. We don't get caught up in things. We take on things temporary just to play with it. It's very easy. So when people say, well, you know, it's hard to change, it's really... What they're saying, it's hard to let go of what they've adopted or taken on because right. that's not their natural state. No. And, I, and I love when people turn around and say, well, you know, humanity is naturally violent, naturally self-serving and so yeah. forth. And I go, that's absolutely it. not. It's yeah. not. Because I mean, when we, I think unconsciously we know it too because you have names such as a humane society for the protection of animals. The, yes. the humane towards other species and other people. Humane contains human, which means that at some level, we do know that being human is the ultimate kindness and beautiful expression, right? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of the things that oh, we were talking with Lance and Helene and Amy was the change in perspective of the teacher, guru, leader, you know, enlightened person to a genuine um, willingness to listen or express one's viewpoint. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, it's usually different, I think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Cool. And it's not, it's not about, you know, uh, anything like even the information that you share, I share, others share, and so forth. Uh, it's really just, it's a, it helps people remind themselves. Yeah. Yeah. It's really them. You know, it's, it's about them, and it's not about, you know, we tell them how to live their life. You give them little tools so that they can actually discover themselves, and because exactly. it's really them. Yeah, without judgment as well. Absolutely. That used, to, every... that used to annoy me at first, because it's like the message of empowerment, right? And the finding the tools and everything to live a genuine life and then finding out that people sometimes use those tools to genuinely have a highly low vibrational frequency experience. <laughs> like, really? Okay, well, no judgment here. I'm not judging. I was judging. I was totally judging. <laughs> yeah, we, we all go through that. Uh that at some point and we come to the realization wait a minute every, every experience is perfect everyone is having exactly what they need when they need it how they need it and uh, they'll move through it whenever they're done with it